is up everyone it's z and we are finally beginning the beginner rock series so as you can see i have made this castle all the way up to castle six already when you're first starting out in this rise of the kings game the war game you want to go through you know with the email you've created and then just uh, we're just going to be focusing on what you need to really upgrade to maximize you know your time and your resources especially for a non-spender it's really important that you go click on that story so that you can complete all these tasks all these tasks will give you extra rewards including exp exp is so important in this game because the more exp you have the more skill points you're able to have we'll touch up on that later but when you are creating you know inside your castle all these tiles what's really important is that you need eight war tents what are war tents this one right here so war tents will increase your training capacity quantity basically and it'll increase how fast your soldiers will train and as you you know as as you know this is a war game so you're going to need a lot of soldiers the more you have the better you always want to be training soldiers at all times why do you need eight war tents i feel like a lot of players don't give so much importance to the training speed but the training speed is so important because it is what you're building every day you're always training troops so you want to bust out those troops really fast why do you need eight hospitals well as a new player if you're starting in a new kingdom you're going to experience what's called a civil war in this game and what a civil war is is basically a war within your kingdom when you first get into a new kingdom you're going to meet all these people who spend to get higher up and they're going to attack you so let's say that you have a thousand troops inside your castle if you have no hospitals whatsoever and somebody attacks you those thousand troops are going to die but let's say that you have hospitals now then the thousand troops will have somewhere that they can be in and you can heal those thousand troops of course it'll take resources to heal but you can heal them and you'll continuously keep those thousand troops that's why it's so important that you max out your hospitals so that you don't lose any troops because at this time right now in this castle i'm making like 120 troops at a time imagine if you lost like 5,000 troops and you're making 120 troops at a time it's gonna take you forever to get back to that troop count so just make sure you're making eight you know more tents and eight hospitals and over here i'm just gonna be showing you how i set up in my castle you do not have to set it up this way at all you can set it up however you like in your castle it's your castle you do what you want and you make it however you want but this is, I'm just showing you how I do it. So all my army buildings, I like to keep on the left side so that I don't have to go, you know, to the right side right here and, you know, make troops left, right, and keep scrolling all the time. I like all my troops all in one area so that I can look at it and I can just, you know, make it and it's just easier for me. And then I put the research building right on top of that, the institute, because it keeps, like, it's a constant reminder like you should always research especially if you're starting in a new castle never leave the research empty always 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 continuously research something until you know you've reached near the end of the research institute which is gonna be a long time anyways but always be researching what you should research first well start with the military stuff and then start with the farming stuff I feel like the farming stuff is also very important. So what I did was I focused on the farming. And a lot of people have like this misconception that they should increase every building inside to their castle level. I would not recommend you to wait and upgrade everything to your castle level. See, if you notice my lumber right here, it's still level one and my farm is still level one. I did not make it my castle level. Right now I'm building castle level seven and not all of my insides are castle level seven and that is okay because what's important is you wanna make sure that 
you're building your castle up so that you can build the next tier of army. So let me just show you like what I mean by tier of army. So when you reach C22, you'll get T7 troops. T7 just means tier 7, which is like level 7 troops, which is really good. You, you know, um, we're going to definitely touch up on that, but we're going to try to get to C22 as fast as possible. And as a non-spender, you want to increase your castle as much as possible. Where you want to be is C26, which is castle 26. That's when you start, you can start making T9 troops. What are T troops? So let me show you. Next to this catapult word right here on top, the Roman numeral number one, this is what you would call a T1 troop. T just means tier, so tier one, which is like level one army. So when people say, you know, like T9s, that just means like level nine army. All right, but of course, the goal for a non-spender to be at a good spot would be T9 army at castle 26. But of course, you're not, you know, going to be able to get there very, very fast. So the one that I would say before the T9 would be castle 22 that is kind of your goal to hit as soon as possible and that's why i don't recommend you trying to get everything inside your castle the same level as your castle number because really the most important thing for you right now is to get to c22 to get those t8 armies Let's say that you have a bunch of T1s inside your castle. That's not going to be as effective as if you had like a T8 army. And we'll touch up more on that later, I promise. Let me just start making sure I'm always researching at all times. And just making sure I'm building my army right now because I do need something to farm with. No army, I can't send it out to farm. Okay, so for this one right here, the drill grounds, I always try to make it match my castle level. This is one of the most important things in the game that people neglect. Having a bigger dispatch means you can farm more, you can hit more things, and yeah, we'll definitely touch up on that too. But just make sure this one right here, this drill grounds, is a good high level. Just a reminder, make sure you got your notification bells on next to the subscribe button and like this video. I am doing a live stream per video, so that's why you see like a lot of these things are already built up. But during the live stream, I will answer your questions and also, you know, help you as much as I can. And yeah, I will do that. And these short videos that come right after it, they are edited just so... In case you don't have time to enter the live stream or even just watch like one hour plus of random things that the live stream has, this video is supposed to be short and concise so that you can watch it. Remember that if you're starting in a new kingdom, go in the big players alliance that spends because you can reap all of their rewards. I know a lot of people when a kingdom first comes out you want to build your own alliance and that's completely okay if you're okay with getting a small alliance it's okay too but you have to remember that at the end of the day your kingdom is only going to be strong if you are united and you will only be strong if you are safe right and you're not going to be safe if the big spenders are going to be killing you all the time so you might as well join them reap the rewards with them all right, let's look at some of these events. So this event, the catapult event, is so important that you hit the resources or the knowledge potions because it will help you a lot. The resources are like 30 million grain and lumber per. And if you're first starting out and you're deciding if you should spend or not, first make sure that you have friends in that kingdom that will stick through it with you because you don't want to just spend unless you're like super rich, right? If you want to do light or moderate spending, buy this one. The Eliana's Fund. It will give you a bunch of gems, and you need all these gems for the skill books. It is so important. Another good thing to buy if you're a light spender or you're a moderate spender, there are these hero packs. You can get this one for ten dollars, and every single day of for thirty days, you will get all these rewards. Same thing with this one. It'll help you increase your gold heroes. So when it comes to me, I am kind of like a moderate spender 
and I know this is a non-spending video, but I just want to touch up on what to get. Increasing your heroes with all these packs, like this one, the gold, one gold shard for three bucks. This is, these are really good packs because heroes are a good investment that you can make into the game. But just make sure you're, you know what you're investing into. I've seen a lot of kingdoms where people invest and then at the end of the day, like maybe like eight, you know, eight months to like two years, everybody's going to leave that kingdom and you're left alone. And you spent so much money in that kingdom that you don't want to move kingdoms because you've invested so much. Just make sure that you know what you're getting into if you're investing. That's all I'm saying. Make sure you have a good, solid group that will stick it out with you. Okay, well, those are all the tips I have for you today. Just make sure you're taking in these tips. And I will see you in the next part. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to support me. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Look out for the next live stream for the next part of this video. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that if you're going to follow me throughout this whole journey... I am going to do a lot of you can help me decide as well type of things and also um, I will make some farms for this castle of mine. I My goal is to make this castle C30 without spending a decent amount of stats as a non-spender and then if you've been following me in this journey I will take notice of it. Just make sure you comment each and every single time I post one of these edit videos which is like this one and um later i'll put your name in a raffle the more you know like each video if you comment once then that'll be one basically raffle ticket for you and uh however many times you watch this video and watch it fully then i will put your name into a raffle and at c30 when i reach c30 i will give you this castle if you won the raffle all right so that you can play in my kingdom and then i will make farms for this castle as well and those farms personally i'm not going to build it up because of my lifestyle i work way too much and i don't have time for it so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to give the farms out when i do make them to people in the comments i mean just comment it and um, i'll make a raffle and you can have it either if you want to come in my kingdom and talk to me or talk to us or if you kind of just want to lurk, you know, and you just want a castle and you don't want to go through the tutorials, I will do that for you and I will give you the castle. I'll probably make like five and five people can pick it and play. I know it's going to be a farm castle. It's not going to be the best castle, but like I said, you can use it to talk to me. You can use it to grow slowly if you want or just do whatever you want with it. It's, you know. All right. But with that said... Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see ya in the next Beginner Rock Series Part 2. Have an amazing day, you guys. See ya!